Hello guys and welcome back to another video and again we are in the BMW 130i today and it's going to be another video on the N52 engine. Now we are going to be replacing one of the disavalves. valves, this time we're going to be replacing the smaller disa valve we've, we've actually already replaced the larger one which sits on the outside of the intake manifold the smaller one the one we're replacing today sits on the inside of the intake manifold now again i haven't really had any issues i'm only really just replacing this out of preventative maintenance i believe in replacing parts before they fail rather than waiting for them to fail and ending up with a much larger repair bill. Now, my car has covered 120 odd thousand miles, so the original disc valves probably don't have a whole lot of life left in them. Now, I'm gonna be swapping out the original disc valve for a Febby Bilstein disc valve. Now, Febby Bilstein, they've never let me down. They offer great quality. You know, it's pretty much an OEM match when it comes to their parts, so I have full faith in the Febby Bilstein disc valve and if you do want to purchase the same part that I am installing today I will leave a link down in the description box below it's from a company called Fluid Automotive here in the UK but without further ado I think we'll get outside and let's get cracking now then first of all I'll show you where the smaller of the two disc valves is located so it is just located on the inside of the intake manifold down here this is the larger one on the outside, the one that I have already replaced. Like I said, the one we're replacing today is this one here. Now, when it comes to accessing the disc valve, traditionally people like to remove the intake manifold completely. And I can kind of see why, because you know, you would think that you would have to remove it to gain access. Obviously there's no way of sliding the disc valve out of there but I'm actually gonna to attempt to remove the disc valve without removing the intake manifold because I think if I can remove the air box and the alternator down here, I think I will actually have enough room to be able to get in there and get that original disc valve out. And if we can access the disc valve without removing the intake manifold, that's obviously gonna save us a lot of work. It means we haven't gotta remove the cabin air filter box and the entire scuttle panel. We haven't gotta remove the engine cover. And most importantly, we haven't got to risk snapping some of the CCV pipes because as we know with age, they can get very brittle. And when it comes to trying to remove them, they can snap. So ideally, I'd like to leave them in place until I go to replace the entire CCV system. Now, first thing I'm gonna do is completely remove the air box and this front section here, just so I have better access to the tensioner to release the tension off of the drive belt. And then what I'm gonna do is remove the intake pipe and then maybe move this out of the way temporarily, the power steering fluid reservoir. Then I'm gonna to have to remove the throttle body and possibly this disc valve as well because the disc valve on the inside is actually screwed in from this side the screws are actually behind the throttle body you would think they'd be screwed in from this side but they're not so you have to remove these to access the screws okay so first thing i'm going to do is just disconnect the electrical connector from the mass airflow sensor and then i'm going to release the jubilee clip from the air intake pipe now remove these two 10 millimeter bolts that hold the air box in place. And I'm just gonna separate the air box here. May have to just lever the intake pipe off it. that's the air box removed okay so this is the jubilee clip that i removed and this is the electrical connector for the mass airflow sensor next thing i'm going to do then is remove this front section it's just held in by four t20 screws
And there we go, that's them removed. And this should then pull out. There we go. The next thing I'm going to do then is remove the drive belt so that I can get the alternator off safely. And to remove the drive belt, you need to gain access to the automatic tensioner, which is just there. And as you can see, there is a slot. You need to put a T60, a Torx 60 bit in there. Then you need to rotate it clockwise and that will take tension off the drive belt where you can just remove it by hand. There we go, that's the belt off. Now would be the perfect opportunity to check the condition of your drive belt, see if there's any cracks in it, and it may be a good idea to replace this. I'm actually gonna be replacing the entire drive belt kit in a couple of weeks or so, so I know it's uh, gonna be replaced anyway. And now what I'm gonna do is remove the positive terminal from the alternator, just held in by a 30 millimeter nut. And I must point out, I have disconnected the negative terminal on the battery. There's the nut. Can be removed. Then there is a small electrical connector on the bottom as well. That just pulls off. And now all we need to do is remove the four bolts that hold the alternator to the engine. Looks like a E14 or E15 bolt but we'll get all four of those removed. Okay, so I lied, these actually take an E12 socket, so quite a bit smaller than I thought. We'll get these out now. Oh, don't wanna lose the washer. Oh, it's not a washer, it's actually a bracket. There goes the alternator loose and it should now be able to be removed from the car. There we go. And now that we have the alternator removed, the moment of truth is whether or not we can access the disavalve. And I think I can, I think I can access that fairly easily to be honest. But now what we need to do is get this side stripped down so we need to temporarily move the power steering fluid reservoir remove the intake pipe the throttle body and the disavalve and then we'll have access to the screws that hold this disavalve in place okay so first thing i'm going to do then is get the power steering fluid reservoir out of the way and i'm actually going to just remove this vacuum pipe out of the way as well just that just unclips from there And it unclips from underneath here as well. There we go, that's loose. And the reservoir is just held in by these two 10 millimeter nuts. And just take the washers. And this just lifts off. It can be taken out of the way. That's out of the way now. And now I'm gonna work on getting the air intake pipe out, which is just held in by a Jubilee clip that goes onto the throttle body. And that's loose enough. And I just need to separate this back section, which is held in by this bung. And with that removed, the entire pipe should come free. go and that's the air intake pipe out 
And now I'm going to go ahead and remove the four 10 millimeter bolts that hold the throttle body in place. And once you have all four 10 millimeter bolts removed, the throttle body should then be free and away from the intake manifold. And I'm actually going to go ahead and unplug the electrical connector as well. And then this can be removed. And with the throttle body removed, you should then have access to the three T25 screws. There is one, there is another, and there is another just up there. And there we go, that is the three T25 screws removed. Now it was a little bit awkward. It probably would have been a little bit easier with the uh, other DISA remover. I did think I was gonna to have to remove that, but you don't have to. If you do wanna do it to make access to these screws easier, it's entirely up to you, but it does not need to be removed. Now we need to see if the DISA valve can be removed. Okay then, so I think we may have done it. As long as I can get this out of here now. Come on. Yes. And we've done it. There we go. That is the DISA valve removed. Obviously, we just need to unplug the electrical connector. There we go. Okay then, so this is what the original DISA valve looks like. As you can see, it is covered in oil a bit, but there is actually no play in the valve itself. And it is quite surprising, to be honest. You know, it's still all intact. It's covered 120 odd thousand miles, and it's still good. Obviously, we are gonna be replacing it anyway for preventative maintenance, but this part is still good. And now it's time to install our nice new DISA valve, and I'm actually gonna go ahead and plug it in first as well. So that way around. And now I just need to feed this back through and slot it into the intake manifold. There we go, push back in place. All we need to do now is reinstall the three screws. Okay, so we have all three screws installed and tightened down. And now the throttle body can be reinstalled with the four 10 millimeter bolts. Okay then, so that is the throttle body reinstalled. I've tightened down all four of the 10 millimeter bolts and I've tightened up that Jubilee clip and I've actually reinserted these electrical pipes back onto their holders. And now we are ready to reinstall the intake pipe. Okay then, so just slide this underneath. slides onto the throttle body like so and we just need to tighten down this jubilee clip and then put the bung back on here and that is this pipe reinstalled there we go that's on tight and then we can actually place our power steering fluid reservoir back in its place it sits on top of these studs and then we just need to reinstall the washers and the two 10 millimeter nuts. There we go, that's those two nuts tightened down. I've actually went ahead and reinstalled this vacuum pipe as well. And now we can focus on getting the alternator reinstalled. Obviously it's just the four main bolts. Now, because these are aluminium bolts, you should really only be using them once, but because it's, you know, it's not really on a critical part, it's only holding the alternator to the engine, I'm not gonna, you know, buy new bolts. If it was something critical like the uh, rocker cover, then I would, in fact, you know, replace the bolts because if one of them snaps, then you're gonna get a massive oil leak. But with something like the alternator, you're fine to just use them again. That'll do. Obviously we need to plug the electrical connector back in. Just push it on like so. And obviously we need to connect the positive terminal back on as well. 
which is secured by the 13 millimeter nut. Go. Make sure that has a good connection. Next then is getting the drive belt put back on, which means again using our T60 in the automatic tensioner, which will allow us to slip the belt back over the pulleys and in its original position. Okay then, so there we go. I believe the belt is now on. I've checked all the pulleys, it seems to be sitting right. So it goes from the top of the alternator across down to the aircon compressor and then it goes round the uh, tensioner. From the tensioner it goes down to the crankshaft pulley and then from the crankshaft pulley goes to the power steering pump, then it goes to the idler pulley and then back round the alternator. Okay then, so that is the hard part already done. All we need to do now is reinstall the airbox and the front air intake, and we are pretty much done. First thing is then to install this air intake section at the front. That's just held in by four T20 screws. There we go. And now, the airbox itself can go back in. And there we go, that's the airbox reinstalled. And I've actually went ahead and reconnected the negative terminal on the battery as well. And with that being said, it is job done. Okay then, so that is another job done on my BMW 130i with the N52 engine. And that is actually both disc valves replaced now, so that is just one less thing left to worry about. And as you saw, you do not need to remove the intake manifold to access either one of the disc valves. It's so much easier just to remove the alternator and access it that way. And doing so means there's actually much less risk of breaking one of the crankcase ventilation pipes. And of course, it saves you a whole load of time as well. So I hope this video has been somewhat helpful. I hope you have enjoyed it. Please give this video a like, leave a comment down below, subscribe if you have not already done so, and I will see you all in that next video. Peace.